I was going to watch the RM and Pharrell interview. I thought, why don't we just do it together? So here we are. Give you that. So that, Mandy, that's why I said tonight should be an easy night because aside from bicycle and this, it just makes sense. Um, the only thing I know about this is that I need to get this cover, this, uh, this Rolling Stone, because I've got this one from Joyce, and I've got this one, I think, it might have been Joyce. It might not have been. And I got this one, which isn't Rolling Stone, but I still got it. And I bought this one myself at the airport. Actually, I take that back. Roundhouse bought me that. Um, so, welcome, Zivimin. Zivimin. Hope I said that right. Um, I, I have to say, of what I know of Pharrell... I've been a fan. Um, I really don't know much about him. I think I boated by his house in Virginia Beach one time, but that could have been a complete crock, and I just didn't know any any other. Um, and um, I'm a huge fan of the song Happy and the video and the way they did it, 24 hours and just driving around and people dancing for the game. It was fantastic, and I still love that song. So hopefully this should be good. And I have to assume if Junie's hanging out with the guy, I can't be that bad, right? So let's see how this goes. I really don't know what to expect, and I hope you have fun. I'm not sure if you if you remember it or not, but we've we've met at um of course I Billboard remember. Music Awards yes, of in course. 2018. Yeah, do you remember? Took, yeah, we took a photo. <laughs> we took a photo. Yeah. I wanted to work then. <laughs> First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for having thank me you for as well. As well. Uh, you know, I think that... Okay, before I continue, I'm going to let this play out a couple minutes, and I want you to let me know if the volume on the interview is too low, because it seems low to me, but I don't know how you're getting it necessarily, so let me know. But keep in mind, if you say it's too low, I got to start pressing buttons, so it better be low. There's a huge benefit in writing and producing for other people. I'm mm. pretty sure you may feel that way as well, but it allows me to um, go to places that I wouldn't go mm. for myself. And as much as it feels like, you know, I may know what I'm doing when I'm doing songs that I'm, you know, uh, featured as a solo artist, uh, some people know, but most people don't know that all of my solo efforts have always been songs that I have written and produced for other people. In fact, when I try to write songs for myself, uh, produce songs for myself, they always are too complex and seem much more like a puzzle mm -hmm. than they do, um, you know, a jam, you know, or like right. a bop. But I do those for other people. So for me, oftentimes, my best stuff is uh, the stuff that I poach back for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is for you. In 2005, uh, 2005, I was a, just an elementary school kid, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to be a rapper. As I um, get to got to know what's rap, it's you know basically it's rhythm and poetry. I really f f felt attractive. For Did Junie just say he was in elementary school and he knew he wanted to be a rapper? Did you hear that? Talk about following your dream. That is, that blows my mind. And he just said something that I missed because I was processing that fact. Something about, was it rhythm and poetry or something? And I just wanted to be a rapper. As I um, get to, got to know what's rap, it's, you know, basically it's rhythm and poetry. Mm -hmm. I really f felt attractive for this whole genre to, you know, send the messages to the world. Actually, it's really, um, you know, embarrassing to um, answer about all this in front of um, my um, idol, but for me, it's... Um... 
Okay, I, I have to I have to say this because I'm feeling it and I have to get it out. Can anybody else feel like Junie's a little bit nervous right now? Is anybody else getting that or is that just me? I mean, I would be nervous in either one of their shoes, obviously, but like he feels really nervous and like it's it's kind of hard to watch, right? Ugh. Oh, man. For me, it's it's really it's really more comfy to you know mostly for me I I, I write somebody's lyrics or or the melodies yeah. for 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 other artists yeah. not ma as many as you but it feels like you know it gives me another avatars and characters yes yes so so mm. when when it comes to me yeah. um it's a complex and it's it always comes with the pain you know to to confess. Mm. But it's still um, the most important part for me. I can relate to that. I think uh, the pain part for me is probably the fun part because that, mm -hmm. like, that's like some of the most vivid paint mm -hmm. that we can use as artists when we're like filling in mm. what we want to be a, a power, powerful verse. It's like, okay, does it hurt enough? Mm. Did you hear that line? Okay, I know I'm going to drive a lot of you crazy because I'm going to have some commentary on this. What Pharrell said was so brilliantly put. Junie's talking about pain and complexity. The pain part for me is probably the fun part because that, like, mm -hmm. that's like some of the most vivid paint. Mm -hmm. Pain is the most vivid paint that you can use. That we can use as artists when we're like filling in what we want to be a, a power, powerful verse. It's like, okay, does it hurt enough? Ooh. And you know what that reminds me of? The D2 live stream that we did. When we deep divined, deep dived D2, Yungi on paper. Oh, you talk about pain and vivid paint and the way Yungi threw D2 together. Oh my God. <sighs> mm. You know, or does it feel good enough, mm. you know? Um, True. So I, I understand you there when you say, you know, you know, you 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 inject the pain in your verses to make sure that like right. you know they're strong. Uh -huh. I agree. I was wondering, you know, creative process, you know, how it's different for you yourself, like in my mind, or or girl, or you know, between. Okay, what's oopsie? Why are we getting oopsie? I froze. All right, are you getting me now? Are we still good? What's going on here? Okay, there I am. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> yeah, just a little twitch hiccups, isn't that right, Judy? So now, if that happens again, and it probably will, I'll make an actual adjustment instead of slapping the monitor like I just did. <laughs> Let's hope for the best, shall we? Understand? We're going to work out the kinks, and then we'll be flawless. And that's how you say it. Moving right along. Oh, you didn't miss too much. I'll back it up a couple seconds. Does it still say I'm offline? Or is everybody good? I'll make sure before I go on, because I don't want to lose you. All right, I guess we'll keep on trucking. 
resources to make sure that like right. you know they're strong. Mm-hmm. I agree. I was wondering the you know, creative process, you know, how it's different for you yourself, like in my mind or or girl, or you know, between the you know songs you made for for the others, like the singers or the rappers or like clips, mm-hmm. um, grinding of course. Mm-hmm. I just wonder the difference, you know, from the from the scratch. So mm. when an artist walks in they ask for something like a track or a you know idea. they'll say you know you know i just want something hard or i want something darker or i want you know the you know something that's like for the club like you know banger you know what i'm saying a banger mm. like and so i'm considering what they're looking for mm. but i'm also thinking about like the texture of their voice mm. and wow and the and the patterns and the melodies that they do usually then i think about um, how I can give them something very di- different than they've ever done before. Mm. And so when you mix all of that together, a lot of times, you know, an artist will say, man, that's a little different for me or whatever. Mm. And then I'll go ahead and reference it and, you know, sell it, sell it to someone else. And then oh. like oftentimes that same person will come back to me and say, man, why didn't you play me that? And I'll like, <laughs> I did play you that, but they weren't hearing it in that way. Wow, that's the fun part. Yeah, that's mm. the fun part. But then there are people who who jump out the window and they go ahead and try it. Because mm-hmm. my whole thing is just try it. We don't have to put it out. Right. But you know, people are so good at what they do. Sometimes they're afraid to explore different parts of their voice, different parts of their personality, and mm. different parts of their career. Mm. So you know, they're a little like hesitant. But for the ones that do try it. They get to experience something new. And look, if we've decided at the end of the day it's just not right for them, it's not right for them. Right. But you got to hear a different side. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite part of writing and producing for other like people. Like a challenging. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, so here comes another thing. Okay. Um, I started I started to listen to music. I mean, like the hip hop music mm-hmm. in, in, in 2005. I started with the Nas and Eminem, mm. okay, of course, the classics. Yeah. But you know, as I get to know you, when I when I first listen to your song, especially, I just want to point out, take it off, yeah, because that's my um, that's my playlist, one of the playlists. Whoa. So that's crazy. When I when I listen to it, <laughs> I just I even I even wrote I even translated into Korean and I just just recorded once when I was an I'm amateur. Whoa. So so you know when I listen to it, I just always been wanting to have the you know frequency like you know because. You always cross over this. These days, genre doesn't mean anything. But I think at that time, I think it was like you know some some rappers really criticize the rappers who sing or or yeah. use the auto tunes. Right. But I don't know. You started your career as a, as a producer, or so you're like very um natural for that. But I always um wanted to have the frequency like you. Like you know, it, it sometimes it's just singing. It could be falsetto. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you rap. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you just you just you just sang the hook for yeah. for the other artist, yeah. like Snoop Dogg, and so um, mm. how how do you position yourself when you um when you when you partic- participate in the song as as a player? Like, wow! First of all, these are great questions, <laughs> Thank you. Um, and no one's ever asked me that. Oh, really? I feel like Junie is interviewing Pharrell. Junie's like, I don't want to say much. Just let let him do the talking. Have any of you heard Pharrell's song, Take It Off? I'm not familiar with that song, but it doesn't sound like it's a remade church song. It doesn't sound like a church remix. <laughs> Take It Off. Anybody familiar? Jojo, I know you're familiar. Jay's going to look it up now. <laughs> Can only imagine though, but it's on Junie's playlist, so it must be good. Take it off. It's expensive, girl. What does that mean? Oh. Wait a second. Okay, so I'm putting some pieces together based on what you're telling me. Is Expensive Girl was a cover 
or was it sampled? He translated it. So you're telling me that Expensive Girl was a translation of Pharrell's Take It Off? Am I, am I reading this right? Get out of here. No. Get out of here. Ooh, that's that just blew my mind. And here's here's what I can tell you about that. I don't even know Expensive Girl. I haven't heard it. I haven't read the lyrics. And I've done that out of respect for Junie. I'm still going to hold true to that. But that connection right there, that little BU piece that just flew in there, that was a cool little moment. Oh, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. And that's why Pharrell was like, whoa. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Or not. Like, no, I've never had a journalist ever ask that me. That really matters me, to me. Um, so. And that's no, that's like no cap. Like, you, believe it or not, no one's, and, and it sounds like I, they could have, and it because it's such an obvious question, but no one's ever asked me that. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by that. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> Junie's so happy. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Everything, I make decisions based off of feeling. Oh. I don't make them com based off of um, convention. <clears throat> I gotta rap, I gotta sing. Yeah, gotta no, it's, just, it's mm. just whatever it feels like it needs. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna channel it as best as I can because I'm trying to tell somebody else who's gonna be better than me mm -hmm. to do it. And oftentimes, what will happen was people artists will be like, "Nah, we want you to stay on there," and I'll be like, "No, but it's for this person." Mm. But I channel what I feel like is missing, mm -hmm. and I huh. and I forget that it's gonna be me because if I think that it's gonna be me, then it won't be as good and I won't be as confident. Mm -hmm. I'm only confident knowing that I am giving the instruction and the directives to someone else. Hmm. Like for example, there's hmm. a record that I did with um, Mystical a long time ago called Mystical, yeah. wow. Yeah, <laughs> sh shake your ass, right? I would, <laughs> Junie's response of like, Mystical, wow. I was about to say the exact same thing because I haven't heard the name Mystical in a minute. <laughs> oh man, shake your ass, watch yourself. Oh yeah, I gotta keep it down because you know it's back there. <clears throat> So when I did that record, I was thinking like, you know, writing wise, you know, Chad and I produced it together. But when I was um, when I was writing that hook, I was pretending that like Eddie Kendricks from The Temptations uh, could do it. And I remember saying to them, oh, man, you know, we're going to get like, you know, we're going to get, um, you know, the guy from the, you know, The Temptations to do it. And they were like. Nah, we, no, we, the record company wants you to stay on there. I was, oh. like, I was like, wait, what? Mm. So it was like this weird thing where like, I started to realize that was my sweet spot is when I channel other people oh. and I surrender to what the music needs and not let my ego or my feelings get involved. And then I actually make better decisions, whether it's gonna be me on the song at the end of the day or, or, or not, other artists. Mm. or another artist, mm. I've given, I filled in the blank and, and given them a different feeling. Mm. And oftentimes, sometimes I would be sharp, you know, when I'm yeah, singing on there, mm. but it just felt good and we would just leave it. Wow. So I'm not sure if you if you remember it or not, but we've, we've met at um, of course, I Billboard remember. Music Awards yes, of in course. 2018. Yeah, Do you remember? Took, yeah, we took a photo. <laughs> we took a photo. Together. I wanted to work then. <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I didn't want to like, I didn't want to like, you know, be aggressive. So I was like, oh, so, you know, let's just okay. take a photo. But, you, you but I'll tell you what's aggressive is these boots, both of them, on the aggressive boot game. <laughs> nice. But I really yeah. wanted, to, I was like, yo, let's leave. I think we took a photo backstage yeah backstage in your room actually yeah mm -hmm. and then like i was working in a studio not too far off and i really wanted to be like yo fuck all of this no you know what let me not let me correct this i don't want your fan base to be mad at me <laughs> using, using well, this like kind it. of language <laughs> um, no, but not, man i was like man i wanted to be like listen let's leave here right now mm -hmm. and go make some great music because i just loved Ooh. everything that you guys were doing i just i love your energy and mm -hmm. You know, I love what it is that you represent, you know, at such a time when, you know, our Asian brothers and sisters and, you know, um, fellow Asian human beings that maybe not, maybe don't identify necessarily binarily, 
uh, in a binary way, you know, the Asian um, community has just been going through so much. These days, yeah. And, uh, you Gradually, know, more and more. Um, the Asian <clears throat> community has given me so much. And I really feel like y'all's energy, you're also showing like artists, period, not, period, not just like in different, not just in one specific genre, but I think you're just like also showing people that like, you don't have to be, you can be humble. Mm -hmm. You you guys, your energy is very, there's a lot of humility that you all vibrate. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great mm -hmm. energy. <clears throat> what people don't realize is like when you have, you know, literally, you know, hundreds of millions of fans mm -hmm. and you encounter them, you know, 20 and 50 and 100,000 at a time. I can't notice a single face in them. It's mm -hmm. just. Okay, are we buffering again? I just saw a little hiccup. So let me just make sure we're on point here. Is everybody good? Is everybody okay? Jeez, I'm starting to panic there. I don't want to lose anybody. Okay, we good, we good. It's just a, Man. It's just a mess. It, 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 yeah, a, it's- M-A-S-S, -S, not a-, not a yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mass. It's a mass. And, yeah. and it is a massive voice, and mm -hmm. it is a massive, using that word mass, it is a massive energy mm -hmm. coming at you. Mm -hmm. And you say jump. And, and then they jump. And they jump. And you sing, and they sing every word. Right. Mm. And you know that you can feel through their voices that so many of their lives have been affected and changed because of something that you've done. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't know I how you. Believe. I don't know how you do that mm. because I've had a couple songs do that, and then when I get out there and go sing it, that that would make me cry because mm. it was too much of a responsibility. Every time I get that close to that size and and what I do as a musician, I always step back. You picking this up, this is crazy. Pharrell's not a small star. Pharrell's huge. I mean, and he's acknowledging the idea that BTS is changing lives, like legitimately changing lives with their music. And when Pharrell reaches that spot, that he approaches a song that he's done, he's had that effect, he starts to like kind of struggle with that and he pulls back. He stays away from that space. But what does BTS do? They lean into that space. They embrace that space. And that's why you get these videos of like the entire stadium singing the song where you can understand every single word because there's 100,000 people singing those. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is awesome. Oh, why? It's like, is, it's, it, is it too heavy? It's, like it's too heavy, man. Too much? It's too much of a responsibility. That's why mm. I really revere people like yourself and you know, your, your, your band members and other artists like B and J and like, man, what y'all go out there and go face every night on that stage. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some insight here. This is my, this is my guess here. Watch Junie. We know Junie's a smart dude, whip smart dude. Junie is extremely introspective. Okay. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Junie is fascinated by the human condition and the psyche. Watch Junie's body language change a little bit when he starts understanding what Pharrell is saying about the responsibility and how Pharrell deals with that responsibility versus how they do it. So watch Junie. That's why I really revere people like yourself and you know your, your, your band members and... He's locked in right now. He's seeing that like, The way that BTS handles these shows and the way that they're all done and how they get in there. I mean, they have shed tears upon tears upon tears on stage or in interviews or in shows. Like they have been as vulnerable as can be to millions of people. And at some point I have to assume that that becomes part of the journey. It's part of the process, right? So for him to look at Pharrell, who he acknowledged in the beginning was like kind of one of his idols, and Pharrell saying like, I don't know how you do that. Junie's, I'm guessing, taken aback a little bit. And he's kind of saying like, there's another side to this coin that is so natural for us that we live in that space. And he is absorbing everything that Pharrell is saying right now. Oh, who is that? Was that 
Cobalt, that's um, Brian. The intellectual conversation that Junie craves. Boom. Other artists like B and J and like, man, what y'all go out there and go face every night on that stage. It is, it is humbling and it's mm. overwhelming. And sometimes your nervous system got to be built for that. Of course. Let me ask you this. How do you deal after you come off the stage feeling electrified and shocked every night? How do you, how do you, how do you decompress or do you decompress or do you purge? Like, how do you do that? Mm. That's a good question. It's, you know, it, it, I, I, um, my first performing was um, in front of like 10 people in some small clubs when I was like 15. Okay. 10 people. Um, I like forgot I, all, most of the lyrics. So at that time, I just realized that, oh, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a star type. I'm not a, you know, like a, mm -hmm. like these, like a front man and, you know, could enjoy all this shit and just, you know, like, like, like Kurt Cobain or, yeah, or yeah. Mick Jagger. I'm not that type of, I'm just a human just who loves writes, writing music and just, you know, uh, the energy so wow every night um like for example we had um we stayed in shows in las vegas last april yeah it was four but like every night is a is a challenge it's like same set list um yeah. um you know it's like maybe the same flow sort of type little different but mm -hmm. um just like you said that moment like after we finished the first three beginning songs and then we, you know, take out the earphones mm -hmm. and then like, we just like, we're, f yeah. <laughs> we're fucking back. It's like, that's like everybody yeah. shouting out. At that moment, you know, that's when I really, um, gets all, all the nerves. Um, and like, you know, it's a, there, there's a different, different me persona for, for, the, wow. for the next two hours and a half. But, wow. but before that, from the rehearsal and even in the playing, I got really like really nervous and you know like so responsible because I like I really am aware of the stories that you know fans buy the tickets and they come from Brazil, you know, from Japan. Oh, this uh, I was I was thinking it before he said it. When he's talking about his nerves, right, and the butterflies he feels. First of all, like it, it is surprising, but it's not surprising that he still gets butterflies before these shows. You know what I mean? Um, but the responsibility, it's like, okay, there's a responsibility. Like there's the weight and the anxiety because like you want to do a good job. You don't want to make an ass out of yourself in front of this many thousands of people, obviously. But when you know that that a lot of people in the audience like this is probably their once in a lifetime opportunity that they're going to get a chance to see you and you want to give them the best show that they could possibly have so that raises the stakes that brings all that weight back on your shoulders right and that he's just saying like people came from brazil they came from this far they got the tickets it was like the hunger games he's aware of all that so when he steps out on the stage there's just this massive weight on him. Like, that's how it feels. I can totally get that. But, like, before this conversation, did you ever think of that? I never thought of that. I mean, I can get, like, performance anxiety. I understand that. But knowing that and carrying that out on stage with you, yoza. Wow. Like, really, like, from everywhere, they just come there for their for just that one night. Mm -hmm. So it feels me like I have to pay back, you know. Wow. <sighs> I have to give them, I have to offer them the best night ever in their lives. So it's a, it's a, it's a mess and it's a, it's a too much energy. But wow. um, I'm a human and I really get nervous and I really sometimes get depressed by, and even, you know, get swallowed by all the energies. But I'm trying and I'm, I'm, I try to deal with it because wow. I'm a human and I love the music. I love their love because, you know, I think love is really happening when we give somebody not mm -hmm. we we, we, take, receive, receive. Yeah, we take yeah so i think it's more closer closer to the real love i guess personally so i just want to give them give them back you know they um brought us from you know just a small city in korea all the way back to you know this the heart of this music industry yeah. las vegas la new york you know me having an interview with pharrell 
it, it, it can happen because of, you know, fans all over the world. I'm just always grateful and I just don't want to disappoint them. How do you wow. define, how do you position yourself? Like, you know, you're a producer, mm -hmm. yeah, you may be a rapper, you may be a singer, yeah. you may be a CEO, yeah. um, father, yeah. <laughs> a husband. Yeah. Like, what's, what's um, like, you know, I'm for, of course, the, the, the name Pharrell explains everything, but like, you know, but ex except that how do you, how, how will you define yourself? Like, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a public servant first. Public mm. servant. Yeah. Wow. I like that. I like yeah. that word. <laughs> that is not what I thought he was going to say. I mean, I, I thought he would answer very generically with like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and then I'm a producer. But no, a public servant. That is, man, Pharrell just got some points on him. Who? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, I, you know, when you serve the public, you know, you're doing, um, that's what something that's, for that's, public yeah and that's mm. that's god's will i'm a believer oh you're a believer yeah, yeah i believe you know the universe is real um <laughs> for me god is the universe mm -hmm. we're in the universe um and then you know again you know being a public servant you know being you know a father a husband um and then music is like everything for me because music's the, the skeleton key that's opened up every door. Still, for me to still music. Is. Yeah, it's mm. like the center of everything because without that, I wasn't able to do all the stuff that I'm able to do. And then I definitely have my struggles with having a, a lack of a sense of purpose, I think. Mm. Um, mm. When? Like, uh, right around 2005, when I put out In My Mind. In My Mind. I just felt like, After man, that? Right after that? Uh, I, as soon as it didn't do what I wanted it to do, I mean, culturally, mm. It, it made an impression, but it didn't do it um, egotistically. It didn't perform the way I wanted it to, Charles. Oh, nice. Like it just. You hear how he said that? Egotistically, it didn't perform the way, the way he wanted it to. That's really an, such an interesting way to put that. Do what I wanted it to do. I mean, culturally, mm -hmm. it, it made an impression, but it didn't do it um, egotistically. It didn't perform the way I wanted it to. Wow. Like it just didn't do what I was used to at that time. And that really hit me hard. So that made me start to think about like purpose and things having real true DNA and not just aesthetic perversion, mm. but like. Aesthetic perversion. Real true like meaning uh, and something that could be meaningful to people, but at the same time still fun. And you know, I've always loved a girl. So <laughs> that was always gonna be a part of it. But um, so I understand what that is. I know what it's like to hit that part, that place in your career. Mm. Uh, and for whatever reason, and, and you guys are doing fine, but I think, you know, from what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding, uh, you guys hit a, hit, you hit a place where you were like, you know, what are we doing? Mm. Who are we? Are we who we said we were? Right. You know, um, and, and, you know, as you think about who you are and you think about what you mean and what your intentions are, it's like also kind of determining who you want to be. Um, I mean, how's that, how's that feel? Like, wh where are you in that process right now? That is an awesome, awesome question. Where are you in that process right now? Because this is a process, not an event. You're working on a solo record, right? Yes, like 90% of the work is done. I've, okay. I've released some mixtape as a you know one of the member of the band but i think it was just a, like a like an experiments i think this time it's my maybe mm. like maybe my official first solo album okay um, that i could feel enough okay i don't know it's gonna be like um i i don't know it's if i if i would feel like you after my mind or not but i right. think you know it, it'll happen after after when i release it yeah. so i just i'm just dependent on it Okay, can I just pause? I want to ask this question. So he just mentioned, uh, Junie just mentioned the mixtape, and he said it was like an experiment or whatever. Was he talking about RM's mixtape, like his first one, or was he talking about mono? Because I'm, I'm honestly not sure. He's talking about both? Huh. Really? Okay. Wow, that's... Pretty resounding. Okay. On the time, but um, it's been just like 10 years after we had our debut um, as a team. 
So you know, K-pop is mm. you know all about the all about the band and the groups. And actually, I told you, I personally started my career as a as a as a rapper mm -hmm. uh -huh. and as a poet. Yeah. So um, poet. That that's that was a tricky part actually because you know um, the K-pop is like a, is like a mix. Yeah. It's like the mix of American pop music, all the visuals and the choreos and and social medias and stuff. It's really intense and really hectic. So it has some pros and cons of its own. So, you know, after 10 years, I think um, it was not our intention, but we, we took it. But we actually became a sort of a social figure. So, you know, a uh, K-pop band going to have a, uh, have a speech at the UN mm -hmm. or, you know, meeting the presidents. It's like, I'm, I really, I, I think I was really confused that I'm a, like a, what, what am I, like a diplomat or what? So <laughs> yeah. I, I was just a, like a, you know, a small, small rapper and lyricist um, when I was young, yeah. like from the scratch. So, um, so it was ten years, really intense as a team, uh, and um, I actually was in charge, like almost all, all of the interviews, and um, you know, representing the team, like in front of the other members. That was my that was my stuff, I guess, role. Yeah. So, um, I think I got really um. Um, I don't know, like, yo, I gotta, I gotta stop, I gotta stop this for a, for a bit. Yeah. I gotta shut it down and just, you know, fall from away, fall, if, uh, fall from it away, and then just see what's going on. You know, making my mind really um, calm down. Yeah. And then I think so. That's how I um, got to concentrate on my just, just solo. And I, these days, I really have been thinking about the, the 15 when I, when I first listened to you. You know, the first. Um, feeling and the vibe and the reason why I started, what I why I chose music to yeah. you know for my whole life, I guess. So um, yeah, when I was when I was when I started my music, I was like 14, and now I'm like 28. So it's like just the half. It's like wow. you know, it's like short, way Jeez. shorter than you. Right? Um, so I'm <clears throat> in that process. So it's really tricky and confusing, and I just don't know what's going to happen. Um, so any, if you could give me any advice, it's because you were in the band, and you are in the band, mm -hmm. and you, you've done the best. It's, it's different from the K-pop, but you, 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 you've done a lot of projects, like of course N.E.R.D., um, Neptunes, yeah. and you know, of course your solo. Yeah. So, um, like, any any thoughts about? Um, you know, being being. I also have to assume that there's a level here, like especially from Junie's position, who says like. He's been watching Pharrell for a long time. So he's got, I don't know, let's say it's an hour to chat with Pharrell. He's gonna answer his questions and he's gonna ask his questions, but there's gotta be some part of Junie's brain, we know how Junie's brain works, that is also, tr like there's so much he wants to say, there's so much he wants to ask, that he's trying to like accomplish everything at once. I have to assume that he's going through that. Being in the Neptunes, being in NERD and having a solo record really helped me because it, it, it you know, you do one thing, then you take a break. You do another thing, then you take a break. You mm -hmm. do another thing, then Switch you take modes. a break. Yeah, and, and it allows me to like put on different hats and put on mm -hmm. different masks. Um, so I understand that. Uh, and I, I know like having that departure is gonna make it really <clears throat> fresh for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's good for you to do that because then when you come back to it, you know, to the, to the to group, the team. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's going to be, yeah, to the team, I think it's going to be super fresh and you're going to have a whole lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. I would just say continue to move forward, continue to be curious. Mm -hmm. um, mm, good don't one. Don't put any kind of necessary pressure on what it is that you do by saying, you know, no absolutes like, oh, I will never do music again mm -hmm. or I will never, I, I wouldn't do any of that. I would just, mm -hmm. No nevers. No nevers. Just there's the moral of the story from Pharrell. Be curious. No absolutes. Write that down. Be curious. No absolutes. Stay along for the ride. Just mm. keep going. We're cruising. Yeah. And mm -hmm. just see where you end up. Because it's really interesting. Thank you.
No, thank it you. It was a plus. Pleasure's mine. Love. I can't believe it's over already. Are you kidding? I got to say, seriously, like. I said in the beginning, I've been a fan of Pharrell. I mean, I don't know a ton of his music. I mean, I know some N.E.R.D. Um, I know Happy. I know, you know, like he did Drop It Like It's Hot with Snoop. Um, but like this interview was extremely good. Like. Yeah, obviously, like, we can feel Junie's nerves. That's for sure. Um, and I think even Pharrell, I don't know if it was necessarily nerves. And it might have been. But I think they both had the same issue of, like, here's what I think it was. <laughs> I think both of their questions to the other ones were so complex that, like, as an answerer, you have to take all of this information and construct it down to something digestible and then present it to the other side. That's not easy to do. I mean, like if it's okay, perfect example. I know you'll understand when somebody says, why do you like BTS <clears throat> and your head explodes? That's exactly because there's so much information up here that you have to try to like, uh, how can I answer this question without scaring them away or making them fall asleep because I'm just rambling on for three days. Exact same thing. These two are so in music and it's part of their DNA that all of these questions and the fact that they know what to ask and how to ask it to the other side, that is no small feat. So bravo for the two of them. And seriously, be curious, no absolutes. Pharrell, that is on, I love that. That might be my next tattoo. Maybe right here, you know, it's right on the, like, hmm, hmm. And then mono backwards right here. Yeah. And then Gino, right, small on my back, you know, because I want to keep it fresh. <laughs>